Good morning, everyone. Welcome to Invest Newark's webinar with NJEDA on phase three of their emergency grant funding. Today, we'd like to ensure that we help you understand the eligibility requirements and also the application process. I am Vanessa Quijano with Invest Newark. I'm the Senior Vice President of Business Development. Uh, here at Invest Newark, we ensure that businesses have access to knowledge, like these webinars, uh, access to capital, like the different funds and loans available to small businesses and businesses at large, access to land. Uh, we will be launching the Newark Land Bank um, in, the next, uh, in the next month and also access to business opportunities. We try to assist you and connect you uh, with the anchor businesses that have contracts and bids uh, available for you to submit an RFP for your business. Today, speaking uh, for our webinar on NJEDA's phase three emergency grant funding. We have Liddell Robbins, the CFO and CIO of Invest Newark. And we also have Matthew Abraham, the regional director of business development for, Nor for Northern New Jersey for NJEDA. Liddell. Good morning, everyone. Thank you all so much for making the time to participate in this morning's webinar. Uh, we're delighted to have our guest speaker, uh, Mr. Matthew Abraham, Regional Director of Business Development North for the New Jersey Economic Development Association. Uh, we're also very um, grateful to be working with uh, Mr. Medina, who has been helping to share information during this difficult period with newer businesses about all of the programs um, that various agencies, including the NJEDA and the Need Invest Newark have been trying to offer. Um, as many of you are aware, uh, at Invest Newark, as the city's economic development corporation, um, we offer a wide range of services, some of which Vanessa highlighted, um, but also financial assistance that financial assistance doesn't always come from ourselves, uh, which is why we're very part, uh, very fortunate to be working with the NJEDA, who has continued to progress their COVID financing relief activities, which have been very expansive and necessary uh, during this period in time. Um, so rather than kind of go through some of the highlights myself, I'm gonna take the opportunity to pass over uh, to Matthew and allow him to talk about yet this third phase of the NJEDA uh, COVID-19 grant program. Thank you very much. Excellent, thank you very much. Uh, and we'll switch over the slides, but yeah, we're very excited about the uh, new phase. We're going into phase three of our grant program uh, and that allows us $70 million in grant dollars to get out to the small businesses in New Jersey. Uh, we do have some set-asides so that we're able to uh, uh, get the funding to the right locations, uh, to distressed municipalities, to, to areas that probably were unmet uh, areas uh, from the federal government. So we were able to fine tune it and we did some, uh, some, some set-asides uh, to be able to assist in all areas. I'm, uh, did, did you want me to... I'll go ahead and start my slide if that's okay. Go ahead. Yep. All right. So the, as I said, the relief package is uh, to assist. We, this is our third phase, our first two phases on the grant program. Uh, we were very successful in getting the funding out to as many businesses as well. Uh, well over 21,000 businesses that we've supported so far with over $76 million in, in funding. And that included a, a, uh, a tool chest of uh, various, uh, 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 various programs, Oops. including entrepreneur uh, programs that we had and, and technology programs. So to ensure a quality increase of visibility, we did, as I mentioned, we did have set-asides, but not only for phase three, 
but uh, the phase two program. The phase three program actually has a new set aside uh, that we have for uh, urban enterprise, I'm sorry, for uh, opportunity zones. And I'll get into that a little further on these slides. Just gonna minimize my screen. So small business uh, emergency assistance grant program, phase three, uh, we've expanded this program. This program allows uh, up to 50 full-time employees equivalent, so FTEs. And that includes, so when we say FTEs, full-time uh, equivalents, you could have multiple part-timers that uh, aggregate to a full-time employee. So uh, we have a, a tool on our, our uh, portal where you could type in various uh, uh, employees to see and put their hours in to see what they would qualify for as far as re in regards to if they qualify as a full-time employee. So if you had three part-timers all working um, you know, 10 hours, 20 hours, and another one working uh, 20 hours or another 10 hours, that three people could equate to one full-time. If you had two part-timers could equal to a full-time equivalent. Again, we have a, a great calculator on our website, cv.business.nj.gov that you can go to uh, to be able to uh, to be able to test out the system to see what your estimated grant award would be. These grant programs, there are no fees. There are no costs for you to apply. They're completely free in that sense. Uh, the, the program has a two-step process. Step one is you have to pre-register. Now, pre-registration started this Monday at 9 a.m. But you have from October 19th to the 27th at 5 p.m. to pre-register. So you got to go on cv.business.nj.gov to find our, our pre-registration application and pre-register. And I'll walk you guys through the application itself, the pre-registration application, so you see what it looks like, uh, basic business information that is, that is required. Uh, as I mentioned, uh, the, the $70 million that we have allocated for the grant program, we've expanded it to help restaurants, up to 50 full-time employees, micro-businesses with five employees or less. And micro-businesses are sole props as well as uh, home-based businesses. So if you're in home-based business registered in the state of New Jersey or do business in the state of New Jersey, uh, you are you are qualified for uh, for the uh, for the grant program, and then we have all other applicants, non restaurants, with six to fifty full time employee equivalent uh, as well. Now, once you once you pre register, you're going to have uh, an ability to then apply, uh, and depending on what your industry is, if you're a restaurant you'll apply on October 29th. If you're a micro business, you'll, you'll be able to apply on October 30th and all other applicants, the application itself will go live on November 2nd. So let's go into a little bit on the restaurant. So what are we gonna look for as far as eligibility? So even though we say restaurants, we know restaurants have been hit hard uh, during this COVID crisis, many had to close down. And then when they did reopen, they had to readjust their, their restaurants to fulfill the, the capacity rules and the limitations, and then as well uh, provide PPEs and, and take extra steps to secure um, the health of every, uh, every employee as well as every, uh, and every uh, participant that came into the restaurant as well. So what we are looking at is really um, food services or drinking places. Uh, the NAICS code is 722. Now, if you don't know your NAICS code, that's okay. Um, there's a couple of ways of accessing the NAICS code. One, you can go on Google um, and, and look up your NAICS code. Two, uh, you could look at your tax return to see what your NAICS code was, uh, was on, on your tax return. Or three, as I mentioned, cv.business dot nj dot gov. There's a tool there that a hyperlink that will also help you identify your business. You must have a loc uh, physical location in New Jersey. 
You must be registered to do business in New Jersey. You must be in good standings with the Department of Labor as well as the Depart uh, Department of Taxation. You must fill out and certify debarment legal questionnaire. You must certify to negative impact due to COVID. So uh, we're gonna ask for a narrative. How did this COVID impact you? And uh, you'll be able to plot, you'll be able to put your narrative in to say uh, COVID uh, had a huge impact on my business. I saw a 30% uh, loss in my revenues from the previous year. And so you'll get that opportunity in our application to do so. Uh, and the entity has to be in operation uh, as of February 15, 2020. So any businesses that were created after that date would not be eligible for this program. Uh, as I mentioned, the pre-registration has to be done prior to the, the application itself. So the pre-registration is available right now. You can go on and pre-register. That is not on a first come first serve basis. Pre-registration is available and open till October 27th. So you could take your time in filling that pre-registration now, but please fill it out. And then once the applications go live for your industry sect, you'll have to go back in and, and go into the application itself. Micro businesses, as I mentioned, it's really, um, we're trying to assist small businesses, I obviously uh, businesses that have five or fewer. I think uh, it's been limited in funding that I, I think uh, we've seen from other uh, entities. Um, so they do get hit hard and we wanna make sure we, we take care of those micro businesses. The program size uh, we have set aside for this micro business is $15 million. Micro businesses with five or fewer employees are eligible for a maximum award of $5,000. Again, physical location in Jer New Jersey, must be registered to do uh, business in New Jersey, must be in good standings with the labor department as well as taxation. Uh, legal questionnaire has to be filled out and you have to show the negative impact of COVID. And I will say, uh, I will make these presentations available, but if you do have additional questions, we will at the end go through some uh, uh, Q&A. So you have the ability to ask questions. And I think I see people trying to uh, putting up some questions already, which is great. Uh, we'll, we'll get to them. But we do uh, have a frequently asked questions on our website or at least at cv.business.nj.gov. If you go there, you'll see where the frequently asked questions are and answers for those questions. So don't think you're, uh, we won't respond. You can also go there and be able to interact with, an, uh, with someone to be able to ask questions. You can do it through a bot or you can call into our, our customer care line. So if, if you miss anything, don't worry, we're here to help you out. As far as all other businesses, the operating expense grants is up to $15,000. So full-time equivalents of six to 25, up to 10,000, 26 to 50 employees, up to $15,000 in grant dollars. Again, uh, businesses uh, here, we're also able to help not only uh, uh, regular businesses like restaurants and so forth, we're also able to help nonprofits, 501c3s, c4s, and so forth. So if you're a nonprofit, you're also eligible for this grant. Uh, for all other businesses like the nonprofits, and so uh, the registration period is will open up on Monday, November 2nd at 9 a.m. Again, the pre-registration is not on a first come, first serve. So you should pre-register today, whenever or uh, until the October 27th, until whenever you have uh, the ability to take some time and do so. But the application for this opens up on Monday. November 2nd at 9 a.m. So if you're a nonprofit or if you're all other business that you fall into this uh, category, just be ready, have all your documents ready, have all your information ready. And I'll tell you, we'll go through some of the information that we're gonna be asking for, but be ready to be able to submit your application on November 2nd at 9 a.m. so that uh, you're in the queue because this money is on a first come first serve basis. There's still a huge, uh, need out there in the business community. So I, we anticipate the $70 million uh, 
uh, to be used quickly. So we want you guys to get the opportunity to apply. Uh, you, uh, I believe, as I mentioned, we want to ensure equality. We want to ensure accessibility to this funding. So we have a 33% set aside on this phase uh, three for businesses that are in the Opportunity Zone census tract. Now, you might not know if you're in it or not, but that's fine. On our, our uh, website, on our portal, there is a link to the COVID business portal for the Opportunity Zone map. And that tool, actually, you can put your address in and it'll tell you if, in fact, you are in that census tract. That doesn't do anything as far as it just tells you that you're in that census tract and that we have a set aside of funding. You don't have to be in that census tract to get, be eligible for, uh, for the funding. All areas in New Jersey will, and all businesses in New Jersey are eligible for this funding. So I don't want you guys to get confused. Um, and ensuring equality, we, what we've taken the extra step was to provide access to non-English speaking applicants. So we do have on our cv.business.nj.gov portal on the top corner, uh, you could change the language over to Spanish. So if you're, uh, if you're Spanish speaking uh, and you understand Spanish better than, than the English, definitely take advantage of that. Um, we've also contracted with different uh, interpretation service, uh, so interpreters, to be able to assist uh, if you need another language, whether it's Portuguese, or whether it's Spanish, Polish, Korean, Italian, Hindi, Gujarati, Tagalog, uh, Arabic, Mandarin, Cantonese, all those uh, are available. Uh, you just would have to ask, contact our language help at njeda.com and then you'll receive a call back within uh, a day or two from a representative to communicate in your primary language. So let's get some down to some of the requirements, how to be prepared. So you could view the app, a sample application on our, uh, our uh, business portal. And again, I keep mentioning this website. It's because cv.business nj.gov has all the updated information. It has any new programs that we come out with, any issues we might be experiencing because a lot of people are on our, our system and uh, applications are coming in. Any updates, cv.business.nj.gov is will be your best friend in that sense. Uh, you could get questions answered. Write that down. That's going to be critical. Uh, have your contact information and primary business ready and available. No, if you received other funding, whether it's on a federal basis, county basis, local basis, have that information available because you'll need to use, you'll need to put that in uh, to the application as well. Your business name, full name, the one that you registered with the state of New Jersey, your entity type, whether you're a sole prop, LLC, C Corp, S Corp, uh, 501C3, uh, you know, C4, whatever designation you have, the year that you were established, the tax ID number. Now, I, I will say if some of this information you don't have readily available, uh, your tax return should have some of this information. Your business tax return should have some of your, this information. Or you can also go on to the web, uh, state portal website to be able to look up your New Jersey ID numbers as well, or federal ID number if you needed to. Your employment numbers from first quarter of 2019 through second quarter of 2020. Uh, your NAICS code, and as I mentioned, uh, there's three ways of getting your NAICS code, your tax return. Uh, you could do a Google search if you put in NAICS code and search by your industry or on our, our, our portal, cv.business.nj.gov. There's also a tool there that you could uh, be able to find your NAICS code. Your 2019 annual revenue, revenue, and then the revenue that you've lost because of the COVID. So now I'll walk uh, you through what our sample pre-registration looks like. It's not, it's not too difficult. It's pretty easy. 
as I mentioned, the pre-registration opened up on Monday, this past Monday at 9 a.m. It will close on Tuesday, October 27th at 5 p.m. You need to pre-register before you could apply for our program. So that's critical. So again, I encourage you all to go in and pre-register. You'll once the your application for your industry is available, you'll have to go back into the portal to complete the application. Again, restaurants, the application will be ready. It will be open at 9 a.m. on Thursday, October 29th. Micro businesses, the applications for micro businesses, five employees or less, will be available on Friday, October 30th at 9 a.m. For small businesses, uh, more than five full time equivalents, the application opens up on November 2nd, Monday, November 2nd at 9 a.m. Now, I stress 9 a.m. a few times on all those time. It's because I want you all to be ready prior to that nine o'clock with all the information that you need to be able to fill that application out. Because once you fill out the application, it's on a first come first serve. So I, you wanna be at the top of the queue or top of the line, so to speak, to be able to go through your application as quickly as you can, thoroughly as you can, uh, so that you could increase the chance of getting the the grant award. Applications will be available uh, at my at the favorite website of cv.business.nj.gov. So let's go in to what the, the pre-registration screens look like. When once you go into our pre-registration application, this is what you'll see: uh, your username and password. If you received uh, a grant from our phase one or phase two. That's fine. You could still apply for this program. So reg regardless of if you signed up for our loan programs or our grant programs in the past, you'll still be eligible for this grant, um, this phase three grant program. The unfortunate thing is you cannot use the same username and password that you used the last time. You will have to go in and register uh, with a new username and a new password. So once you go on to this website, you'll hit that. If you are a first time user, please click register. And that's what you want to click on register, not sign in, but actually register. And then that brings up this screen where you're going to put your email address, username, password, and you're gonna confirm your password. Make sure you write down the username and password. So once the year application goes live, you're able to go back in to apply for it. Once you hit click register, this is where you'll put your information, first name, last name, email, phone number, organization name, title, and website. This is really critical because in the last couple of phases, the phone numbers that were supplied to us, sometimes they supplied their work phone number. When we try to reach out because we want to fund, we want to wire the, the grant dollars back to the customer, we were unable to get a hold of them because the business was closed and the and the phone number was to the business. So at the end, for some reason, we were unable to leave because the mailbox is full. We were unable to leave a message. So what I would tell you is put a phone number that we can contact you, uh, whether it's your mobile, whatever it is. Put an email that's working. Put an email that you look at often because if there's a question or if we need to reach out to you to find out your your uh, bank information to be able to wire your grant dollars. We're gonna either use your phone or your email or both. And we also have documents that you will have to sign and certify for the funding. So that's gonna be critical. Once you hit, once you put this information, you're going to hit update. You're going into your next screen. Once your information is, you'll look over your information, make sure everything is correct. Then within the blue box, confirm, click on confirm email. And what that does is it sends you an email within a couple of hours. It, you should receive an email in your inbox to verify that that is your email address. And then you're going to click on um, 
confirmed and then go back in and go back in and then finish the grant re uh, pre-registration. You're gonna click on COVID phase, th phase three grant pre-registration and you're gonna start my pre-registration blue button on the bottom. Again, your contact information, uh, whether you're the authorized signer for the business entity, legal registered business name, and doing business as. So if you cr created a DBA, you would want to create, you would want to put your DBA in there. If you didn't, that's fine. Uh, you don't need to have a DBA. A business address. So the actual physical business location address and whether or not it's a commercial a bit location or if it's a home-based business. The organizational details. When your business was established and operational, is your business still in operations as of today? What the ownership structure is of the business. And then here, if you have more than one owner with more than 10% 10% or greater in ownership, all those owners has to be listed. So you're going to put in your owner's name, you're gonna click on add owners to be able to list anyone that has 10% or greater ownership into this screen. You're going to need your EIN number, which is your, your employer identification number. Again, if you don't know it, you can look on the federal website. Uh, you can look at your tax return. It has, should have, all tax returns, uh, business tax return will have it as well. Make sure you have that available for you when you're going into this pre-registration. Certify your business is properly and fully registered with the state and that you're, uh, you're in good standings. Um, you're going to uh, you're going to answer. Does your business file taxes under Schedule C or E? If so, provide the Social Security number of the business. Does your business file a New Jersey WR30 with the Labor Department? Uh, if you don't, that's fine. It's not an in ineligible um, portion of the application. It's just that if you file the WR30, we do check with our sister agencies like the Labor Department and Taxation, whether you're in good standings or not. Uh, and it also verifies the employee count for us. Does your business utilize a professional employment organization? So some organizations hire uh, contract employees through the PEO um, process. We need to know uh, that as well. Organizational details such as your full-time employees that was reported on your Q1 2020, Q2 20, or to, to Q2 2020 on your WR30, your most recent, you would want to put up. Uh, number of part-time uh, W2 employees listed on your WR30. Some might have independent contractors, which are 1099s the number of 1099 employees, full-time and part-time. Your total 2019 annual revenue, that's revenue, not, not your total, uh, not your net, but your gross revenue. And then your tax, which states you file your tax returns? Uh, or I'm, I'm sorry, how many, which years you filed your tax returns, 2018? 2019, uh, and if you didn't file tax returns, we'll need to know that as well. Here, we also try to get, we ask you if you're self-identifying in certain designation, minority-owned, women-owned, veteran-owned, disabled, or you don't have to identify if you don't want to. This is more for us to make sure that we're assisting uh, these uh, businesses that are minority owned, women owned, veteran owned, disabled owned. It's a metrics that we like to use. We wanna make sure that we're trying to get this funding out to what sometimes is, is a more of a, a greater need. Again, this does not have any, uh, any issue on your eligibility. This is just information that we're gathering. So don't think that you have to click on any of that. But if you do identify, we do ask that you uh, click on the ones that you identify with. As I mentioned, the NAICS code is where here is where you're going to put in your NAICS code. Uh, 
um, which quarter did your business have the highest uh, employment count? Because that's what we're going to use. So we're going to go back six quarters and we're going to look at your highest um, employment count within that six quarters so that we can give you the largest award possible. And that's what this, uh, this section really is uh, geared for. So yeah, you, you should be able to go back to your WR30s uh, to say, oh, back in December, I had my highest uh, employment count of 40 employees. And that's what you wanna be able to put in here. This is where the business details of information that we're trying to gather. Some of this is eligibility information, right? So does the, whole, does the entity host gambling or gambling activity? If you're a convenience store, or if you're a, uh, any store that sells lottery tickets, that's not considered gambling in what we're, uh, what we're requesting. So this would be a no. But if you are a gambling and gaming activities, then you would have to say yes. If you're a nonprofit, but you host a bingo uh, uh, with prizes, that's not considered gambling or gaming activity. That's just uh, in, in addition to maybe your, uh, whether it's an adult care in the morning or uh, activities, that's fine. Does uh, your business conduct in the adult uh, activities, services, products, or materials? Does the entity conduct auctions, bankruptcy sales, fire sales, loss lease, out of business, or similar sales? Is the entity a trans, uh, transient uh, merchant, meaning your temporary pop-up, your temporary store? Is the entity an outdoor storage company? Does the entity have any activity that may constitute a nuisance? Does the entity conduct any business for any illegal purposes? Towards the end, you're going to have an electric signature saying that all the information that you've provided or, who are, or if it was your CF, uh, CFO or someone else in your business that is provided on the behalf of the applicant is true. Uh, we are going to be checking. Obviously, we, we go back to our other agencies to make sure that we check to see all the information is correct and is true. So you're going to agree by electronic signature and you're going to click both of those boxes. I am the authorized signer for this organization. I accept the above terms and conditions. I agree by, uh, to be bound by, these, by this electronic signature. You're going to receive a thank you for pre-registering. Uh, and then you're going to it'll tell you that you will have to submit a full application and you'll have to log back to the EDA portal during your scheduled time. So if you're a restaurant, food services and drinking place, October 29th, 9 a.m. If you're a micro business, five employees or less. Uh, so those are whether you're self-employed with just yourself uh, whether anything, anybody under five employees or less, um, home-based business that are five employees or less, October 30th and at 9 a.m. Non-restaurants, uh, all other businesses, November 2nd, 9 a.m. You'll have your pre-registration number. Write that down um, so that you have that available. And then if your communications, um, just make sure that we have the right information on your communications. So on your date of when you're gonna come back for the full application, these are the questions that we're going to be asking. It's really based on how COVID-19 has impacted your business. Were you deemed an essential business based on Ex Executive Order 107? If you're a nonprofit, what type? To what capacity was your business able to reopen? Some businesses were able to open at 10%. Some were able to open at 25. That's what we're asking for. What other assistance did you receive for COVID? Whether it's local, whether it was a county, state, or federal. This is for information basis. This also is um, where we, well, actually I'll go in. Where we don't wanna duplicate the benefits. So when you go into this application, you're going to say, my business was impacted by and lost revenues. I'm looking for this grant to cover my payroll. 
But if your payroll was already covered during that same exact time period, say I want I'm, I want I need this grant to cover my payroll payroll for September and October, but you've already received a grant from the federal, state, or local for that same exact period of time, we can't give you a grant because we cannot do duplication of benefits. However, if it you're asking for a different period of time, let's say it's November, December, or you know any other months for payroll, that's fine because it's a different time period. So please be aware of that. What your revenue loss was as a result of COVID-19. What, what is your additional financial need as a result of, of uh, COVID-19? What the grant uh, proceeds will be used for, uh, meaning uh, if it's payroll, if it's working capital, whether it's to pay rent, uh, again, make sure it's not the same period of time that you've received various funding or other funding for. As I mentioned earlier, we do have a grant size estimator, cv.business.nj.gov. You'll see grant size estimator, click on it. This is a great tool. You're able to, you don't have to put the actual name. You can put John Doe or Jane Doe, and you could say they worked 10 hours and then the next employee, ad employee, they worked 10 hours and the next employee worked 10 hours and the next employee worked another 10 hours. Well, then they'll tell you the equivalent to those four employees is one. If you have one employee that worked 30 hours and another employee that worked 10 hours, that would be an equivalent to one. But this tool will tell you exactly what, your, um, what you would be estimated on your grant size. And I would, I would encourage you all to go to cv.business.nj.gov to be able to look up the estimator. We also have an, have, we have an eligibility estimator and tells you exactly what uh, you could be eligible for. So that was the pre-registration and the application. We've taken another step in adding about $24 million into small and micro businesses for PPE access. We know a lot of businesses, especially restaurants, everyone has to use um, the PPEs to protect themselves and their clients from, uh, uh, from COVID-19. So that expense is large and we understand that. We've created two programs, phase one, where we, we're provide, where we can get you a 10% discount on vendors that we've already approved. And then we also have uh, uh, provided them some funding, the manufacturers, uh, to be able to, in New Jersey to be able to sell back to the, the different uh, businesses. Our phase two program, which hopefully will be up soon within a month or so, uh, provides additional funding where we're able to give you up to 25% discounts on the PPE purchases from these the listed uh, businesses that are in New Jersey. Uh, and that's for businesses under 100 full-time employees. You could use the funding right back as a, as a discount towards your, your checkout. Um, and then it also covers, if you're in the Opportunity Zone eligible census track, covers up to $400 per company, $500 if, if it's located in a Opportunity Zone. And then I guess we could go straight to questions. Thank you so much, Matt, for your amazing questions, uh, for your amazing uh, presentation of all of the details that are going on. It's, it's an involved program, but I, I really have to tell everyone, it, what's great is this pre-registration allows for a lot of the denser files to be uploaded, reviewed, to kind of ensure success when the respective grant program goes live, right? Um, so, so thank you for that. And as we enter um, our Q and A, we want to start going our jump into the Q and A. Uh, Vanessa, I think you're on mute still. Thank you, Medina, for starting us off on the Q and A, and thank you, Matthew, for that presentation. Um, I'm actually going to first allow uh, Dawn Williams. She's had her hand raised for a while to speak, and then we'll then 
go through the questions in the chat box. Um, anyone else that has a question, please raise your hand and also, or you can uh, type your questions in the chat box as well. Dawn? She's muted. Yeah. Yes. Hello? Hello, Hello Don. Yes, I just have a question because I just started my business like seven months ago. Um, will I be entitled to a grant? So your business for this phase, uh, it's for businesses that were uh, that were established and, and started from February 20th. I'm sorry, February 15 to 2020 and prior. So if your business was uh, before 20th of, uh, I'm sorry, February 15th, if your business was established, uh, then yes. If it was after February 15th, then no. Okay. Um, I don't have like, um, I didn't even get a chance to really go out there to like start working. Cause I, I got, I have a cleaning business and I was about to go do an office biz. Um, I was about to go clean a, a dentist office, but they had to close, shut down everything. So I couldn't really get my business up off the ground. So I don't know. And I had got a, um, I got $2,000 um, loan and I think some type of grant from SBA. So that was like a back in um, May or June. Well, Don, um, may I suggest you can reach out to he us here at Invest Newark, and we can ensure uh, what if you fit the criteria. If not, um, we can also talk to you about how uh, you can um, market your business um, now to help your business grow. Okay. Okay. Thank you so much, right. Don. Okay. Um, Medina, want to go through a few questions in the chat box? Or I think Medina's uh, video maybe uh -huh. lost there. Uh, you're coming in a little, um, you're breaking in and out. Let me uh, ask a couple of questions. So just, uh, can you confirm for us, Matthew? You said nonprofits are eligible? That's correct. Nonprofits will yes. be, they are eligible. Am I better now, Vanessa? Uh, your video is still frozen and your audio is coming in and out. So uh, oh, no. um, in regards to, and you said they would apply, nonprofits can apply um, with under the small business criteria, criteria right. correct? Yep, that's correct. Yep, that's correct. One of the, uh, sorry, um, echoing in somewhere. Another question uh, was, going back here, uh, would food trucks that operate be eligible? You know, I'm not sure. Uh, if you could supply the your email address to Vanessa, I'll definitely get you an answer on that. Great question, Celeste. Um, you can email me at v q u i j a n o at investnewark.org. We have another hand raise. Uh, let me allow them to speak. Hello, can you hear me? Yes. Um, so I represent a nonprofit in Newark, New Jersey. It actually lost its physical presence, uh, our physical building due to the impact of COVID-19. So I was wondering if we are still eligible to apply, although our physical building we no longer have, but we're still operating virtually throughout New Jersey. Yeah, so the business is, st uh, so the business is still uh, in operation. It's just the the location you were working out of uh, is lost, but since it's still registered in New Jersey, since it still was impact, impacted by COVID, I would say yes, put in the information. When you go through the application, just make sure you just put your narrative in there, but I, I would strongly urge you to apply. Thank you. Can you hear me now, Vanessa? 
Yes, much better, Medina. Thank you so much. Um, when laptops choose the wrong Wi-Fi, that is where I'm at right now. I was like, why did you choose that Wi-Fi? No idea. But another great question I thought was, was, um, was from uh, Gil, which is, uh, we are a distillery with a tasting room. Um, and they, it lists like, um, as this, which is the brewery tasting room. Our main N NACE number is 81290, but our tasting room is a 7224. Can they use the seven two two four? So they 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 file. They have two different codes. I think it is Matt. So depending on how you filed, if you filed uh, and your tax return has the NAICS code of seven two two, then yes, obviously you could. If you have two different entities and you have two different EIN numbers, two different entities could actually apply for the program. Uh, if if your tax return has the eight hundred series you're still eligible. You'll still be eligible under the all other category. And if you have under five employees, then you'll be eligible for the micro. Thank you so much on that. Um, Anna has asked um, that she has stated she didn't know that I could combine part-time employees to full-time equivalents, which is a, a tricky thing. I think they, they might warrant you explaining again that um, so I identified my business as a micro in the pre-registration. Can I rectify that in the actual application? Um, so is it that you have above five employees when you put in those part-time employees? Is that is that the issue? I think that might be it. I think that the formula for full-time equivalent, they didn't count in the FT. They didn't they didn't count that into their FTE, which is a full-time equivalent, not full-time employee. And I think a lot of people make that, mm -hmm. that error. Yeah, so in the application itself, uh, there was an ability to put in part-time employees. So it will get flagged. Um, so depending on how many part-time employees you put in your application, it should flag it uh, to let us know. Uh, as far as then, uh, actually, if you can get their email address, uh, or you can go to cv.business.nj.gov uh, to be able to talk to somebody online to be able to flag your application and see if we could try to get some minor modification on that so that you're, you're applying during the right period of time. Uh, Understood, that was by Anna D, Vanessa. So if we have her uh -huh. in the pre-registration, Anna, if you did not, you should have put your email address to be registered. So we should be able to get right in touch. And if not, you know, correspond with myself. Vanessa's email is there for everybody in the chat box. I made sure to put it there so we can make sure to get your question answered. Um, another Mary question. Oh. oh, sorry. Just going to chime in. There was another question. Um, you know, what is the required info in the legal questionnaire? Um, is that, can you just um, specify uh, that? Sure. So basically we're, 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 we're going to ask if there is any, uh, criminal charges pending, if there's any legal issues pending for your business, for your, you know, for yourself, uh, we're just making sure that we're uh, just protecting the agency from bad actors, so to speak, right, or from people who might have pending lit, uh, litigation that might be, that might trigger a flag. So our AG's office, our attorney general's office will have to review it, if that's the case, to whether or not they can get cleared. Perfect. Um, just another question that came through um, is about pre-registration in, in general. And I think this is something that's come up a couple times in webinars, uh, Matt, which is if they pre-register, can they go back in and refine answers if they're still within that window? Uh, you know, I, I, I thought you had the ability to go back in with your username and password if it's already up. But uh, let me verify that. I'm not sure 100% uh, if that's the case. Yeah, and actually, can you repeat the fact that um, you had mentioned if they had applied for phase one or phase two, they can apply again, but they have to have a different username and password? Can you? Yeah. So because I know, I, I, know, I know a number of people that tried Monday morning and said, you know, I use the same username and password I used before. Why can't I enter? Yeah. So you, uh, so phase one and phase two were unique in that, in their, in their own bucket of funding that we have. 
the third round of uh, fine, uh, funding that we have, which is the 70 million is, is our new program. And because of it, we have to try to keep these buckets, um, I guess, you know, separated in the sense of knowing who we're funding, even though you've already received funding or you've applied in the past. Uh, and if you applied in the past, that's great. Whether you received it or not, it doesn't preclude you from not getting the new fund round of funding. So I'd encourage you to go in, create a new username and password and apply, pre-register. Perfect. And then fast tracking back because um, actually our, the NJEDA digital guru, Rachel, did um, offer back some feedback about the going back and being able to edit your answers. And the, the honest truth attendees is as long as you don't hit the submit button, like the final submit button, you can go back. But if you've, you've hit that submit button, then you, know, you have officially pre-registered is what Rachel has said. So that's something to note. If you haven't pre-registered yet and you're just gathering information right now so you can pre-register, then you know, just be conscious that if you are shaking on an answer, it is not a first come first serve process. You can, you, know, you can go back to your account and finalize your answers and then press submit. But if you press submit it, you have pre-registered officially. Yeah, I think um, that's critical to uh, Medina. And thanks. Uh, so again, pre-registration is not critical in when you finish your application. When the application itself goes live, it's first come, first serve. I think an uh, important question everyone wants to usually wants to know is what's the timeline? So um, obviously the registration process, uh, pre-registration process ends next Tuesday, the 27th. Um, you mentioned how, uh, depending on the your category, can um, when the application opens, they, and they should uh, sign in that morning at 9 a.m. How long after they submit their application will people be notified? So, based on phase one, phase two, I think we've we've learned a lot. Um, we've seen a ton of applications. As I mentioned, we've helped over 21,000 businesses, 21,000 businesses. That's a huge number to undertake. If you think about it, we must have received well over 100,000 applications, well over that. Uh, so it's going to take us a little bit to get through it. Now, I, I, the good news is because we've learned so much from phase one and phase two, our automation process is, is a lot better. I don't have a timeline because we don't know what we, we what we don't know in the sense, but I would I would think uh, well, we're gonna try to accelerate as quickly as we can so that we can get the funding into every business that uh, that that uh, that gets approved. Thank you, Matthew. The other Michelle. side, just to also make Vanessa, just to add to Matt that the commitment from the NJEDA is the fact that they've actually just publicly, in case anyone wants, has, are actually bringing in approximately 40 new um, process uh, reviewers into their fold in order to expedite this process. So if they committed to growing the staff for a full-time contract position, so anyone even looking in that capacity, it is, on the, it is on the social platforms for NJEDA to find it. It is at the careers portion of their website, but they are bringing on additional staff to expedite the processing and make sure that they do it before the end of the year. I love it. Medina, you are on point. <laughs> that so is great. Here, I'm going to also plug that if you are looking to become a processor or if you are looking to become an employee, this temporary period of time, we are looking for processors. It's $25 an hour. Uh, we're going to ask for eight hours a day. It's, it's, uh, if, you're, if you're looking for employment, definitely go on to our website, NJEDA, the careers website, and sign up. We need people to help us to get this funding out to the businesses. Thank you, Medina. So, so on point. That is great. That is and Liddell, great. I think you had a question? No, had yes. A comment? Yes. Yes, Matthew. I wanted to ask two questions that I know came up in the first round. Uh, or sorry, the second round. The first question for nonprofits, are churches and faith-based institutions eligible under nonprofits? And then the second question has to do with, uh, it's related to what was asked earlier. And that is, let's assume that my business opened on January 15th of this year. Um, so I meet the opening deadline, but obviously I don't have much of a track record because the pandemic you know, happened shortly thereafter. 
Um, when it comes to this round, will there be the revenue test that was done in round two to basically compare, to determine a financial loss based on revenue in 2020 being lower than revenue in 2019? So if you could maybe just shed a little more light on how a business that literally opened right before the pandemic started should position their application. Yeah, oh, uh, two great questions, Liddell. So let me take the first one, faith-based businesses. Uh, so if you are a 501c3 uh, and you operate a school, a, char a charter school, or, uh, uh, or you have uh, after school activity program or any of those type where it was affected, then they would be eligible. Uh, if it's for uh, faith-based businesses that f pay salaries for their clergy or their pastor or such, then uh, we can't uh, provide funding for that. That won't. Uh, that would not get be eligible for the grant program. The second question: If your business, if you opened up business January, uh, and you were only operational for a month, two months, and then you got impacted by COVID, obviously, COVID-19, uh, you'll be able to apply. We will ask for the impact because that's a federal mandate. What, what, what was the impact? If you could demonstrate that there was a loss, let's say your revenue was $500 in January, but in March it was zero, that shows a negative impact. That is acceptable if your business, if you opened in January, February, you, you received uh, your revenues was 500, but now your revenues are you know, doing much better. Well, COVID has impacted you, it hasn't impacted you neg negatively. It's, you were able to sustain and grow, which is a good thing. Okay. Um, I was just adding one last message in the chat. Uh, does is there a final question we'd like to um, ask Matthew, Medina? This is a question that comes up a lot, Vanessa. So you know that this is the great debate, Matt, um, and even Liddell, I think, could, could kind of weigh in. We have Jaquita Thomas, who's asked about having several 1099 working with uh, the company part-time. Um, she has paid their fee for service um, do, does she have to translate their hours to see what an FTE is? And I think that this is a big conversation about, you know, um, and, and offering context that, you know, 99% of minority owned um, LLCs and so are sole props. So they FTE a lot. Um, Matt, could you speak to that and where it sits with the phase three program? Yep. So we do, and uh, we do ask for the 1099 numbers as far as, uh, 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 how many you have full-time, part-time. So you do have to aggregate the, the timing uh, hours and, and salary based off of that. So that, that will be critical in your application. Um, and then it gets processed internally. Uh, it, it will get flagged for the processing uh, side of it. Perfect. Um, I just wanted to close out that part, Vanessa, by saying everyone who is here as an attendee, the EDA has really staffed up their call center and their email center. Those two contact points are directly um, in the chat box for you to ask. It's really important in these webinars. I'm very grateful for Invest Newark for um, always committing to these information sessions to answer your questions directly. So always choose to support them and stay very on top of their social and NJEDA social so that as a small business member, you are the first to know when these kind of programs launch. Um, and uh, that that's my wrap up on a wrap up. Thank you, Medina. Uh, thank you, Matthew. I just wanna highlight for everyone, definitely go through the chat box just to highlight again, pre-registration is going on now. It ends on Tuesday, October 27th at 5 p.m. So definitely do that before then. Um, and then the applications process opens October 29th for restaurants, restaurants only on Thursday, October 29th at 9 a.m. For micro businesses, for businesses with less than five FTEs, 
that is on and sole proprietors that application process opens Friday, October 30th, Friday, October 30th at 9 a.m. And then all other small businesses, including non uh, profits and other non restaurant businesses on Monday, November 2nd, the application process opens. Again, this is only after you have pre-registered. You cannot enter those applications without pre-registering. So with that, um, Matthew, any um, final remarks and, and Liddell? Yeah, my final remark before the wrap up of the wrap up of the wrap up, uh, <laughs> <laughs> it's uh, CV dot business dot nj dot gov there is faq so frequently asked questions right go through that information go through the uh estimator to find out what you could be eligible for on the award keep that as your tool to be able to see any new programs because we are going to continue to try to help the small businesses in new jersey so we're going to add new programs uh, as well. We've had our loan program. We're looking at possibly doing another round of it. We, so there's always opportunities for new uh, uh, solutions to help businesses out here in New Jersey. We're trying our best and our hardest. Really, we are trying to help as many businesses as we can. I thank Invest Newark for this platform to be able to get this information out. They are, are a fantastic organization. If your business needs assistance here in New Newark with permitting or whatever, they are wonderful to work with. Vanessa is, is a star in her, and uh, a superstar in, it, in itself. So uh, they're here to help you as well because they want to see Newark grow. They want to see Newark prosper. And I thank Medina, I thank Liddell, and I thank everyone that joined us today. Please apply. That's all I'll say. Please apply. <laughs> Well, thank you very much, everyone. And again, we'll be, uh, I'll be sending the slides uh, to, and actually some additional information to everyone that registered. Uh, and also the recording of this webinar will be available on Invest Newark's website. I'll be sending a link when that's available this afternoon. Thank you and have a good day. Be well and be safe. Stay safe, everyone. Thank you, Vanessa. Thank you, Medita. <laughs>